By the 1920s, rifle shooting was a popular American sport. Riflemen competed in the Olympics, in colleges and in local, state and national tournaments organized by the NRA. Being a good marksman was a source of pride, mentioned in public biographies, like being a good golfer. In 1925, when the secretary of the NRA apparently took money from ammunition and arms manufacturers, the organization tossed him out and sued him. In 1931, amid fears of bootlegger gangs, the NRA backed federal legislation to limit concealed weapons, prevent possession by criminals, the mentally ill and children, to require all dealers to be licensed, and to require background checks before delivery. NRA officers insisted on the right of citizens to own rifles and handguns, but worked hard to distinguish between, on the one hand, law-abiding citizens who should have access to guns for hunting and target shooting and protection, and on the other hand, criminals and mentally ill people who should not. The NRA backed the 1934 National Firearms Act and parts of the 1968 Gun Control Act, designed to stop what seemed to be America's hurdle toward violence in that turbulent decade. But something happened to the NRA's reasonable approach to civic responsibility. In the MID 1970s, a faction in the NRA forced the organization away from sports and toward opposing gun control. It formed a political action committee pack in 1975 and two years later elected a president who abandoned sporting culture and focused instead on gun rights. The NRA had gone into politics, and it was a politics that looked suspiciously like the politics of other big businesses in that era. Its officials now opposed all limits on gun ownership, even though basic safety measures have always been popular, even within the NRA's own membership. NRA officials began to work with the movement conservatives who were finding a home in the Republican Party. These men called themselves conservatives, but they were radicals, determined to dismantle the social protections and business regulation of the New Deal that had kept America stable since the Depression. They insisted that any infringement on business was a form of communism. Movement conservatives attracted voters by insisting that liberal social welfare programs nurtured criminals. This prompted their supporters to arm themselves for protection, increasing gun sales. It was a win-win for the movement conservatives and the NRA, 